Hey everyone, it's Andrew and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm sharing five Apple products that I regret buying and warning you so you don't make the same mistake. Most of the time, I'm very pleased with the Apple products that I buy, but there are some where I feel like I've wasted my money, should have bought a different model, and I realize that I don't really have a good use case for it. I've had extensive time with all of these products, and most of them are still available and being sold at Apple today. So let's get started and we'll start with number five, which is the fine woven case for my iPhone 15 Pro Max. The fine woven case got a ton of hate when it launched back in September of 2023. And after having it for 10 months now, I think the hate is justified. There are some aspects of the case that make it somewhat nice. The material is made of a durable micro twill and the suede material is nice to touch. The edges of where you hold the case is really good and it's a nice feeling overall. It doesn't feel slippery and you could argue that it does do what it's supposed to do and protect your phone. The downside is the case's price. It's hard to justify the price at $59. I tested it out for 30 days and the case was already showing pretty bad wear. There was discoloration and the MagSafe accessories that I used with it we're leaving a MagSafe print and it's not even close to as good as many other cases including the ones sold by Apple. It's probably the worst case made by Apple probably ever and it's shocking that Apple shipped this. It's just so cheap and incredible for it being $60. Next up is the HomePod mini. I have a few regrets with this one. I should have went with another color. I have it in white and for some reason I just don't like it. I've kept it in pretty good shape, but you can see that there's a little bit of yellowing happening. To be completely honest, I haven't used mine in well over a year, probably close to 18 months. I also bought three at the time that these came out, and that was an even more of a mistake. And I'd much prefer the sound quality of one HomePod 2 than three HomePod minis, which is basically the same price. I've actually gotten rid of my other two HomePod minis, so I only have one left. Now this is a decent budget home speaker, but you do have to really be involved with the Apple ecosystem. And if you're not, there's really no reason in getting it. But even if you're heavily into the Apple ecosystem like me, Siri just isn't good on it. And I don't know if it was an update back with iOS 16. I don't know what happened to it, but it just doesn't work. I don't know why, but it's just a terrible product to use. And the studio display that I have, the speakers on that are pretty good. So there's really no reason to even have a HomePod mini on my desk. It just takes up extra space. I'll just be honest with you. The AirPods Max were definitely just an impulse buy. I didn't need them at the time. And really, I just wanted them. And I thought I'd use them a lot more than I actually do. These are actually really good headphones and it has to be one of the most premium Apple products that you can buy. While it is crazy to pay over $500 for a pair of headphones like this, nearly three years later, they are holding up really good. One of the regrets I do have kind of similar to the HomePod mini is I wish I would have went a little bit different with the color. I have it in the black color and it's nice, but I think the white or green would have been a nicer color choice. I love these. I don't have an issue with them. And I think these would be my main set of headphones had it not been for the AirPods Pro 2. I got my AirPods Max in 2021, so a year after they launched. It's actually crazy that Apple hasn't updated them yet. And if they do update them, I'll be pretty annoyed if all they do is change it to USB-C and call it AirPods Max 2. But a year later, Apple dropped the AirPods Pro 2. And seriously, to me, they sound the same. On a flight, the Maxes are definitely better, but I don't really travel a lot and they are heavy and it does feel like if you're wearing them for a long time, it does feel a little bit overwhelming to have them on. And the AirPods Pro 2 are half the price. And so had I known that the AirPods Pro 2 were gonna come out and sound so good, I would have probably never even bought the AirPods Max. Next up is Apple Vision Pro. There's truly no device like it and I find myself in a strange predicament. I really love using it and there's not really anything to hate about it, to be honest. From the design to Vision OS, environments are out of this world and the cinematic experience is the closest thing you can get to today to having a full movie theater in your home. I'm a huge movie watcher, but it's really hard to justify a $4,000 movie ticket even if I use this thing every day for the next five years. I also regret a first generation product, which I've never done before. 
I didn't own the first iPhone, iPad, or Apple Watch. I've always waited because I know exactly how Apple is. The next version or two is always going to be much, much better. Also, the fact that this released with an M2 chip when the new iPad Pro just released with an M4, I think it's a little bit ridiculous that Apple did that. And another thing that I find probably the most difficult is actual time to use it. Maybe if I worked from home and was doing YouTube full time with YouTube and work and personal life balance, I find it really difficult. I love this product and maybe in a year I'll change my mind about it. But yeah, I regret it simply for the fact that I don't really have a use case for it and I don't have time to use it. Now we're on the final product and it has to be the worst user experience that I've ever had with an Apple product. It's the iPhone 14 Pro. And of all the products that I've ever bought at Apple, this is by far the most disappointing. The phone was incredible at the start. The space black color is incredible. It has an amazing camera, great new features like always on display and dynamic island. But when you really compare it to the iPhone 13 Pro, the phone that I upgraded from, there's really not much of a difference. And on top of that, I made the huge mistake of going with the Pro and not the Pro Max. A huge mistake because the iPhone 14 Pro is without a doubt the worst battery experience I've ever had on an iPhone, by far. The phone would be nearly dead after two to three hours of screen on time, which is just not okay for a Pro device. It became normal to charge it in the middle of the day and have to go through really two charge cycles every day. Going back, I would have either not upgraded or I would have went with the Pro Max, which is why I went with the 15 Pro Max this year and it's been fantastic. Let me know in the comments what Apple products you've bought over the years that you regret buying. And if you enjoyed this kind of video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. As always guys, thanks for watching, God bless, and I'll see you on the next one.